So I've been doing a lot with Google APIs recently, and in order to use any of these Google APIs, you need to create projects on the Google Developers Console. Now having created as many projects as I have, I know that it is not the easiest feat, and it's certainly, it's, it's more complicated than it needs to be. I think they've simplified it quite recently a little bit, but it's still really difficult. So I'm making this video today as one, a prerequisite to any videos I do with Google APIs. I could just direct people here. And two, just as a general guide, if you are looking to use the APIs, just how to create these project applications and then how to set you know, your API keys and your old client IDs and stuff like that. So to get started, all you need to do is open your web browser of choice and type the Google Developers Console uh, into your search engine of choice. And it should be this top one here. And you'll get a page that looks something like this. Now this, <laughs> I was, I was trying to time it when it loaded, didn't work out so well. So this just has, you know, a number of graphs and everything. Um, this only comes up if you have made a project in the past, which I have. If you haven't made a project in the past, you'll probably see a screen that looks more like this. So this is the API library screen. This is where you search for APIs. Weirdly enough, this isn't where you should really start with creating an application. I don't know why it brings you here. It also gave me the opportunity to switch accounts, and I will talk about why I did that a little bit later because some Google accounts don't work and I will just, you know, briefly go over that. So whichever screen you start off on uh, to, to, to actually create a project, you come up here uh, next to where it says Google Cloud Platform and these three dots in the arrow. It could be anything in here. I believe if you haven't made a project before, it's on like create a project. If you have created a project, it's just, you know, the project that was most recently selected. Click on that and click on new project up here to the right. And then you give it a name. So I'm going to call it video example because that's just easy enough. And you will get a notification over here when it's actually uh, ready. There we go. So we can now select the project and it will select our project for us as we can see over here and see down here. And I believe we get redirected. Do we get redirected? I don't know. It doesn't look as though we're going to. Okay. Uh, so if you're already on the API library screen, then you're fine to um, stay here. Uh, if you do get redirected by any chance and you end up on a screen that looks something like this with a lot of graphs and everything, it's the screen I showed you before, uh, you can get back to that screen by hitting this library button over to the right here and you get back here. So this is the part where you select the API you want. I'm going to do a demonstration using the data API or specifically the YouTube data API because that's the one that I've been using the most recently. However, you would use whichever a uh, API you wanted. They generally all work the same. Uh, at least for enabling them, so this will pretty much work for everyone. So you just type in uh, the one you want, and I've typed in YouTube, so there's a few APIs you can get to. I'm just going to uh, select the data API here, and then you get you know your search results, and there may be more than one. You select on the one you want, and it gives you an overview, it gives you, you know, some terms of service and whatever. To enable the API, you just hit Enable. And it will take a little while to enable it and activate it for your project, but you will be redirected to where you need to be once it's finished. So you can just wait it out. There we go. And we're here, um, well, looking at more graphs, really. A lot of the screens on the Google Developer Console are graphs and charts. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of them. So you have this overview here, which just gives you some general information, some general traffic stuff have your metrics, which is pretty much the same. It's just a little bit more detailed. You know, have your quotas, which is where you can find out more information about your quotas. So I'm not really sure why there are two fields here, but if you open either one of them, you have your quotas down here. So for example, queries per day, 10,000. That is actually a little bit misleading because the data API works on a point system. I'm not sure if every Google API does, but this is 10,000 points, not 10,000 queries because a search is 100 points. So you can only do 100 searches, but most things are one point in their API, so it's not terrible. It's just not great either. And then you come to the credentials tab, which is where we're going to be spending most of the rest of our time. So some APIs and some uh, instances, you only need to create an API key. So we're actually going to do that first, and we're going to do all of the OAuth stuff in one go. So to create an API key, you come up to create credentials up at the top and hit API key and it will just create one for you. Now I'm gonna reset this. I'm not gonna bother blurring it because I'm gonna reset it. So you won't be able to use it. Uh, but if you wanna restrict your key, you can hit restrict key here. I don't normally tend to do this. It's not necessary. I don't really know 
um, what all these settings are, to be honest. I don't really know what most of this does. As far as I can tell, it doesn't really do anything. So we can just hit cancel, or if you know what it does, you can you can do that. And you can get to that screen at any time by hitting the edit button as well. It just takes you to the same screen. And you can rename it too, if you want. I'm not gonna bother doing that. So with OAuth, it's a lot more complicated. You actually need to do two separate steps. So the first is to come over to the right of the screen over here. Let's see if I can, there we go. I can actually indicate it, look at that. That's Windows 11 Power Toys. If you don't have it, install it and you'll get that. It's really cool. Uh, but you can configure your consent screen and then we hit external. If you have a Google Workspace account or if you're a user or whatever the term is, you can select an internal, but because I don't know how to select in external. So we hit create. And then we give our app our name. So I'm just gonna call it video example again. You don't have to call it the same thing as you gave the name before. Uh, anytime it wants a name, I think you can give it a different name, but I just always do it the same. Then you select your support email. That is a public email, by the way. That is the email, you know, people, well, I was gonna say people tend to email me on. I don't normally get emails, I normally get contacted other ways, but if you're looking to email me, then that is one way you can get to me. Um, and then you have your app domain, which you don't need to worry about. You can actually set an app logo while I'm thinking about it here if you want to, but I'm not gonna bother doing that. Authorized domains, you don't need to worry about. Uh, developer contact information. For some reason, you don't get a selection. I don't know why. Uh, I guess because this could uh, be some other email if you want it to be, I guess. And then we hit the, come on. Oh, it's not doing it now. It's showing me up. Nah, it's not doing the, the power toys thing anymore. I was gonna start using that as a as a way to show things off, but it's actually not doing that. Oh, there we go, it's doing it now. Okay, I'll do it when I can do it. Um, so next we need to select our scopes. So we can hit this add or remove scopes button here. And then you have this whole list. I wouldn't recommend filtering them because the filter does not work properly, uh, but you can just look through and see. You have the name of the API here, so we want uh, in our case, we want the YouTube data API. So for example sake, I'm just going to enable these three scopes. Although you would choose the scopes that you want based on, you know, the data that you want to actually look at. And then we'll hit update. And there are our scopes there. Uh, and then we can just hit save and continue down here. That is actually very useful, that thing. And then we have this uh, test users. Now the weird thing with test users is that if you are the author or the owner, of a, of a project, you are not automatically enabled as a test user and you won't be allowed to use your application. So this is a necessary step. You need to add your email in here. And this is the thing I was going on about before, about um, how my email didn't work. So some email addresses just don't work in here. I have no idea why that is. Um, I'm not sure if there's a certain thing that you need to enable on your account or something to get this to work. But uh, this email address does, my personal one does not. And I really don't know why. But you can see we have our email address down here and then we hit select and continue, or save and continue, sorry. And then we're given a summary of everything. So, you know, we have our user type, we have our app name, support email, and then everything else. You have our scopes and then the test users. And then we can just hit back to dashboard at the bottom to get back to the wrong dashboard. Look at that. Oh, it took us back to the old consent screen. So we need to go back to credentials again, over here. Um, and now, so we have a consent screen set up so we can create our OAuth2 client ID. So we come back up here to the create credentials and then we select OAuth client ID. And now that we've done the consent screen, this bit is a lot simpler. I think it's a lot simpler than it used to be. So you just need to select the, the type, the application type. So if you know what you're developing for, you can select whichever one it is. If you don't know which one to select, hit desktop app and it will probably just work. And then you can put in a name again, can be different. I'm going to leave it the same and then hit create. And then you'll get this screen with your client ID and your client secret. This is kind of useless in a way. Uh, so we hit download JSON and then we can, you know, save the file wherever. I would recommend calling it something like, I don't know, secrets.json. Um, like that, just so it's a little easier to access because generally speaking, you'll want to access this through the file name and kind of load them all in. Uh, if you're using the uh, the Google API Python client, then I think that's the only way to do it. Um, but you can, you know, program it other ways if you do it manually. We're just going to save that. And then I will show you what is in it. 
So open in Google Code, a Google Code, VS Code. Uh, and then if I can zoom in, that'd be nice. So we have it installed. This is the type of uh, project. So installed is our desktop application. This is other values. Um, or oh, sorry, this can be other values if you select anything else. I've never selected anything else, so I don't know what the other values are. And then for this type of application, at least, because it may be different for other types, you get the client ID, the project ID, um, which apparently in this case was randomly generated. Um, normally it uses the project name. Maybe I forgot to fill a field in somewhere. But that normally uses the project name, and then sometimes it sticks a few numbers at the end. It, I don't really know. And then you get your authorization base URL. So this is um, the base URL to access the OAuth2 screen. Then the base URL to get tokens from the API. I've gone flying away. There we go, this is where we're at. Uh, OAuth provider X509 certificate URL. I don't know what that is, presumably that's just some sort of certificate. It just works. As far as I can tell, you never actually need to give it to the OAuth system. So I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is. Then you have the client secret, and then you have a series of redirect URLs or URIs. As far as I can tell, they both work like localhost. Uh, this one is the one I normally pass through because I just pass the first one and it works fine. So, you know, you only need to pass one. You don't need to pass two um, or both of them, I suppose. But yeah, that covers pretty much everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, once you've kind of done this a few times, it gets a little bit easy to understand. But the first time through, it's not as simple because there are a lot of things that are like, what is this? But hopefully this video um, helped in some way. If it did help you to leave a like to let me know because it does you know, give me some good feedback. And if you want more videos like this in the future, then consider subscribing. And um, you know, maybe I'll do some Google API stuff that actually makes use of this. Because um, I probably will do in the future at some point, but if people want kind of a, a general overview of Google APIs because they're all kind of built the same that I can do that if you want. With that, I'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where hopefully that video that I keep, you know, going on about and, and keep being like, oh, this, this, is, this is a different type of video. Hopefully I'll actually get that done by next Monday. I keep delaying it because it's it's a lot of work. So hopefully that will be done. Uh, and, well, yeah, I'll see you then.